Hey guys, you're watching Car Topic, and today we're going to be talking about the supercar that doesn't get you any attention. Now, which supercar is that, you may ask? Well, that car is the Aston Martin Vantage. Now, we'll get to why it doesn't get you any attention towards the end of the video. But let's start off the video with the history of the Vantage to see where it came from and how it is here today. In the year 1972, the very first official Vantage is made. This Vantage has 325 horsepower with a 0 to 60 of 6.5 seconds and a top speed of 143 miles per hour. This Vantage was the least expensive of the Aston Martin lineup at that time and was considered the budget option if you wanted an Aston Martin. But unexpectedly, this Vantage was much more successful than Aston Martin expected, due to the fact that it was much more accessible than their more expensive and more rare models. This meant that in the year 1977, the Aston Martin Vantage got completely refreshed and in fact became the flagship model for Aston Martin through the year 1989. This new Vantage featured 385 horsepower and had a 0 to 60 of 5.2 seconds. It also had a top speed of over 170 miles per hour. After 1989, this is where the Vantage name gets a little confusing, as it wasn't seen until it came back in 1993, but not as its own model. As in the year 1993, the Vantage was the name that Aston Martin used as high power variants of existing models. So for example, let's take a look at the Aston Martin Virage. The Virage is a great car by Aston Martin and is still made today. But from the year 1993 to the year 2000, the Virage had a higher performance variant called the Vantage. This Vantage had 600 horsepower and had a top speed of 200 miles per hour, according to Aston Martin. This is how the Vantage name was used, but as a higher performance variant of another car. In the year 1993 to 2004, the Vantage was also used as a higher spec of the Aston Martin DB7. The DB7 Vantage had 420 horsepower with a 0 to 60 of 4.9 seconds. This Vantage is also the very first to feature a V12, very popular in the current Vantages made today. But let's jump to the year 2005, where the Vantage was finally made as an independent car from all of the other models. This Vantage was technically the cheaper of the lineup, but still had a ton of horsepower and is easily considered a supercar with its performance. This Vantage started with a V8 that made 420 horsepower and also had a 0 to 60 of 4.9 seconds with a top speed of 186 miles per hour. A few years later, this generation of the Vantage also came with a very popular V12. But let's focus on the V8, and why the V8 is a car with supercar performance, but it doesn't give you any attention. When you compare the Aston Martin Vantage to a luxury sports coupe, they look very similar and will grab the same amount of attention. For example, let's take a look at a Lexus RCF Coupe. Doesn't perform nearly as well as the Vantage, but still has a similar look and similar road presence to someone who doesn't know as much about cars. Same thing with a Mercedes C-Class Coupe. A lot cheaper, a lot less power and performance, but still has the same road presence that a Vantage would carry. So if you want to have a supercar performing vehicle that can dominate almost anything on the track, but you don't want to be noticed by everyone and gain lots of attention, 
then the Vantage is definitely a car you'll be interested in. An added bonus is that 2005 to 2010 examples can be seen for under $40,000 and are very reliable based on supercar standards. So anyways, thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you learned a few things about the Aston Martin Vantage and why it's an amazing supercar that doesn't grab you any attention. Please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and let me know down in the comments what you thought of this video and if you have any other ideas for future videos. I'll be sure to make it happen to the best of my ability. I've actually been watching a lot of James Bond movies recently, which is why quite a few of my videos are talking about the cars featured in those 007 films. So if you enjoyed this video, I'm sure you'll enjoy the video that I made on the BMW Z8 a few weeks ago. It's a great video. If you enjoyed this one, please be sure to check it out. It should be on the screen right now. But anyways, thank you so much once again, and I'll see you guys next time on Car Topic.